Hi, and welcome to our panel, Outdoor Learning for Every School. My name is Jean McCarty, and I'm the CEO of OutTeach, which is a national nonprofit that's working to transform education with outdoor learning. OutTeach partners with schools to make outdoor learning part of every school day with a particular focus on science. We coach teachers and we build teachers' outdoor learning labs that engage students so much more deeply in learning. So today we've teamed up with two truly inspiring educators who are out there on the ground every day using outdoor learning to achieve their objectives. Their stories are really inspiring and I just hope that after listening to them, they'll help you move learning outside. So first, Principal Ray Cervantes, who leads Henry B. Gonzalez Personalized Learning Academy, which we're so proud to partner with in Dallas, Texas. So I'd like to start with Ray and just share a little bit about yourself and about your outdoor learning program. Hello, yes, thank you. My name is Raimundo Cervantes and I'm the school principal at Henry V. Gonzalez Personal Learning Academy since 2017. Our dual language academy is in Southeast Dallas and it's one of the choice schools in Dallas ISD. Uh, we are rated A by the Texas Education Agency and the majority of our school community is Hispanic and African American. Uh, we're 97% out of 550 students enrolled receive free reduced lunch. So moving away from traditional teaching since 2017, our personal learning model allow us to implement different approaches to reach students individually, including student learning profiles, learning pathways, and flexible environment. This last one approach guided us to look for innovative ways to unwall our classroom and add outdoor learning program into our curriculum. Great, so thanks, Ray. And I just also want to introduce our second panelist who is Sean Sklowski. And Sean teaches STEAM at Mableton Elementary in Cobb County. And we found out about Sean by following his very active Twitter account where he just brings so much learning to life. So Sean, I'd love for you to share a little bit more about your school and your school's outdoor learning program. Hi, I'm Sean and I've been uh, teaching in Cobb County Schools for uh, 15 years. And ever since I started teaching uh, first grade back in the day, I had a strawberry garden. And then in uh, 2016, we implemented building um, a massive 12 bed garden at my school that uh, we saw a need need for. Um, my school is also a Title I school and it's mostly uh, Hispanic and African American, where 81% of our students also receive uh, free and reduced lunch. So we really just knew that it was a great way to get kids outside learning and engaged and just to make learning unique experiences for them and to really help build our STEAM program, which is uh, nationally certified, state certified, and locally certified as well. Well, thanks, Sean. That's great to have you both here because, you know, oftentimes when people think about outdoor learning, they think you may need acres of wilderness um, to actually be successful. And you are both examples of how outdoor learning can work in any school, in any setting, no matter the resources. So. Um, as, you, as you all know, research shows that experiential learning outdoors can deepen learning and also accelerate learning across the curriculum. It can, it also is proven to develop social emotional skills as well as just necessary 21st century skills. Um, while outdoor experiential learning has always been a highly effective pedagogy, uh, we're hoping today just to elevate the conversation now as education leaders across the country are looking for ways to both mitigate learning loss that we're seeing from COVID, but also create you know, much safer school environments that support social distancing. So I'd love to um, start with you, Ray, and I'd love to just ask you a question if you could share a little bit about how to get started and what are those things that are really important to do in the beginning to ensure success. Of course. So it's starting, I think there's three main steps. Number one is your shared vision, building collaboration, and align with the school goals. So let's start with the first one. The, ste the first step as a school leader is that we must have a clear picture of where we are in student achievement, professional development needs, and resources. Here is when we share, uh, a shared vision is key. When a conversation is started to transform our school from traditional teaching to personalized learning, the creation of the vision was our first step. 
So we included all stakeholders. We decided that at HBPLA, uh, we will empower future world changers in a personalized learning environment to transformative thinking, collaboration, and leadership. So with this, to, to uh, take us to the second step with is uh, involving everybody, the power of collaboration. We explore different ways to engage teachers, students, and the community during the design process to increase motivation and also ownership. This action allows actually to, to the whole school community to see the plan alive and call members to try new ways for student learning. And for the last part, it will be a plan without yearly goals or monitoring will not succeed. So therefore, we must ensure that the use of outdoor space is clear for every teacher and content. We align our campus key actions and our personal learning model by unwalling our classroom uh, to increase student agency through expectations and goal tracking. And I like, I love that word, unwalling your classrooms, so taking those experiences outside, right? And uh, an inspiring story is it came up with one of my late adopters, one of my teachers uh, started having some trouble with perimeter in uh, area. And she came up uh, to me and told me, you know, uh, I had no idea how many concepts I can link with other content and see all my students engage. And not only that, but having that accountable talk, that conversation, that collaboration really inspired everybody to continue using that space more often. Great, Ray. So it's really interesting to hear, you know, how you just established that shared vision up front. Um, you know, I think it's really important for people to understand that outdoor learning, it just isn't all or nothing. Um, and it doesn't require the amount of uh, resources as you may think. Um, students, you know, the, the principals can use multiple spaces across their campus. I love seeing what your outdoor learning lab is, but principals can also use sidewalks and, um, you know, school, sports fields. And students just don't need much to get started. So they just need a paper and a pencil. So I, I want to point out that, you know, if, if if you uh, go to the resource section of our presentation, you'll find a link to some resources that OutTeach has developed to help you with some of these practical tips. But what Sean and Ray have to offer is really an understanding of how to kind of build this into the culture of your school. So Ray, you shared with us kind of as a principal in, in that leadership role as a principal, how you established the vision and really got um, got your elder learning program integrated into the culture of your school. I want to turn to you, Sean, now to talk about kind of your approach um, with teachers and how you, um, you know, how you get teachers involved. And, and I'd love for you to just paint a picture for us of what it looks like to have a school where outdoor learning is present and happening every day. As a teacher, you know, my number one job is to engage students in a uh, real life learning to make them ready for their, their future. And uh, I'll tell you what, teaching outdoors is so amazing because hearing the, the screams and the shrieks of excitement when, when a child finds a worm for the first time or sees a new organism that we've never seen before, it's truly amazing. Um, and what's great about it is I have to teach with phenomena. Phenomena is what drives my instruction. So through the next generation science standards, when those are developed, uh, every state, we have the GSE standards uh, here in Georgia, and uh, phenomena is what drives my instruction. So uh, this year, one of my uh, favorite stories was, I went outside with uh, our, our Moy classroom uh, and uh, one of our other special ed units as well, and uh, I told the kids, I'm like, all right, kids, today we're going to pull some sweet potatoes. It's ready to harvest. It's a, we're at 100 days. Let's see what we got. So the kids just started pulling and they're screaming and they're yelling with excitement and joy and they're pulling the potatoes. They're literally the size of their head. We had one potato that was 2.6 pounds. I mean, some of these things, the phenomena, I mean, I'm seeing things for the first time that I, I never even thought I could imagine. And we're learning so organically and the teachers are even making the connections with their students. They're saying, oh my gosh, we're just learning about force and motion. Look how we're and the teachers are able to make the connections in their classrooms to what they're doing outdoors with me in the STEAM lab and just teaching in general. So getting teachers on board is easy because once they see their kids engaged and they see how much they love that experiential learning, it makes them want to take their kids outside as well. It's truly remarkable to watch children interact in an outdoor learning space. But you have to take time. You have to be patient with yourself and you have to realize that you're going to get dirty 
you're going to get messy. And some days you might, you might, your lesson may not be perfect because you're learning how to teach in an outdoor facility. And especially teaching with COVID, you know, I'm teaching outside with a hotspot. So I'm, I have online learners who are doing things outside of their home, or I'm giving them ideas of how they can get seeds of, from fruit in their home or vegetables. So we're really trying to make it all come together for all of our learners. And it's truly remarkable what you can accomplish outside. Yeah, so I'm um, just listening to you and, and Ray, both of you are describing schools where, you know, I actually want my children to go and schools that are places that are fun and inspiring and engaging for students. Um, I know teachers are just a critical part of that, and teachers are so important in um, just the education process. I'd be curious from you, Ray, um, what should other principals consider in terms of investing in teachers for the long-term sustainability and for embedding outdoor learning into the school, um, the school culture? Of course, so we know that every year we have a plan for professional development. But as a but but I do believe that our biggest assets as school leaders are our teachers, and I'm going to use a Sean uh, quote where he started saying that teaching outside is so amazing. So I don't want you to think that oh we're going to create this outdoor learning space so we will have a separate professional development that we are normally use. No, everything has to be um, intertwined. So with this, we must use the uh, the teacher exper expertise and build trust by using their strengths to guide that collaboration. It is important to give teachers a choice as well on their own professional development. So here at, HB, um, at HBPLA, we create teacher pathways based on our campus goals and PL objectives. So those serve as parameters for teachers to use and explore building on their campus culture, correct? So one pathway is a student agency. And you may think, well, how this will connect with outdoor learning? It's a lot. Because not only the students will, uh, a student agency include data analysis, a student's data analysis, the creation of choice work that the students are able to go and pick, and goal tracker. So the use of the outdoor space as flexible environment not only support teachers' delivery, but also student self-direction and engagement. So it is important that whatever initiative you have in place to empower adults and students, it must be clear. The stakeholders must know the why, the what, and the how, and mostly have measures of accountability in order to be sustainable. Yeah, so, um, you know, at Outteach, we focus so much on professional learning and have been really um, excited about being a part of that with you, Ray, at your school campus. Um, and I think that's critical that teachers have, you know, have the support they need to move from teaching indoors to outdoors. Sean, I'm curious um, what you think some things that teachers can do to support each other in addition to, in addition to professional learning. I think it was really most important for teachers. You know, teachers is sharing our knowledge with one another. You know, every teacher has their own unique philosophy and every teacher is uniquely amazing within themselves. But we have to learn from each other. We have to ask questions. So the best way that I've done gone the last uh, five, five years now is presenting at local conferences, state conferences, and national conferences to really get teachers comfortable because getting teachers outside the four walls that they're so accustomed to, you know, you're, you're taking a, a pedagogy class on how to teach outdoors. You know, you, you need to learn it for yourself. Nobody's teaching you that. So, you know, me presenting at conferences has been very beneficial. I mean, this year on outdoor learning, I've never done more presentations uh, locally and, and through the state this year. So it's been amazing to give teachers the knowledge that they need to start. I've had so many teachers that are now email me that they got hotspots now and that they're taking their kids outdoors and that their principals are seeing the power of the learning and the engagement and how the kids are self they're self-aware, they're self-directing, just like Principal Ray said. You know, the kids are really the true teachers while we're outside. I'm guiding them through their, their content, but the phenomena and the engagement is what's so powerful. And teachers want more opportunities to learn this. And it's our job as teachers and educators, and I would teach as well, to train teachers and to get them comfortable. The more comfortable we get more teachers, the more we can get outdoors and get students truly engaged in real world, uh, three-dimensional learning. Well, it, it's, it's music to my ears hearing that 
there's so much more interest now in outdoor learning, Sean, and that you've been there to support that. And it's also clear to me that both of you in at your schools are playing a, a tremendous leadership role in making this kind of work happen. Um, so the good news is I think some of the tips that you're offering are replicable. So, you know, for other teachers and other principals throughout the country. So this is a great discussion, and I, but I want to shift us in another direction because one thing, Ray, that you mentioned um, in the beginning is how important it is to, um, for principals and teachers to tailor programs more specifically to the school's objectives. And I'd love to hear about how um, outdoor learning supports your objectives for personalized learning and academic growth. So, at HVPLA, our personalized learning model guide our instruction. Like we mentioned, from uh, empower, empowering student agency, flexible environment, and pathways. So with this in mind, we know that no matter what initiative you have, your professional learning communities or PLCs are the ones that are going to guide it. So having these space outside is perfect. That is the, that's how, that's a hook, right? Like you want it to utilize, you want to use it, but having a, a clear plan using the models that you already have in place, for example, in science, using the 5E model for reading, your reading circles, for math, the real world problems where the kids can um, collect data, record data, et cetera. So bringing that conversations to the tables during PLCs allow the teachers to don't feel insecure because sometimes it's also fear. Fear that I'm going to go outside and everything is not going to be as, as I picture it. So, but if we empower those PLCs are, that we already ha are already happening in our in our schools and connect how now this flexible environment will empower it, then we will cover not only the lesson objectives, but we are going to be reaching the goals in every content in, with every teacher. Great. And, and Sean, I'd love to hear from you, too, a little more about how outdoor learning supports your goals in STEM and STEAM and, and academic goals for students. Yeah, be, being a STEAM lab teacher, you know, I'm really trying to get the kids to learn about the engineering design process. You know, I'm integrating. I'm doing so many different things. And two years ago, um, I went to my principal, Pamela Kane, who's amazing, who's been so supportive of me doing the outdoor learning at our school. And I said, you know, look, I think we should redo the front of our school because it's, you know, there's weeds everywhere. It just doesn't look nice. And I, I like to design a butterfly garden with the students. So I had the students, every student at school made a design. Then I picked the best designs and every student, over 1,000 students built. It took us a month, but we changed the whole front of our school. And it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, last, this past year, we had our first uh, modern butterfly chrysalis and the kids found it on the school building and like, you know, those are the moments that you get goosebumps as a teacher. And that's how I know I'm meeting my objectives. I mean, the kids are doing it. They're performing. They're wanting to be outside. And I'm able to integrate. I mean, it's it's truly amazing uh, what you can integrate. I'm in, integrating health standards. We're exercising. We're learning about social emotional learning. We're learning about everything while we're outdoors. And it's really just sometimes you just have to be a big kid as well. And that's kind of who I am. So, uh you know, teaching for me is, is about being a kid and making sure I wear my pair of, of uh, size eights from back in the day, right? We got to keep that mindset so we stay fresh as teachers and, and leaders as well. Right. And I think, too, integrating across the cur curriculum also saves instruction time as well as just really accelerates um, learning. So outdoor learning spaces and just outdoor spaces on campus in general um, clearly provide benefits toward for social distancing and allow students to spread out more on campuses. Um, those benefits are really clear, but I'd also like to hear from both of you, and we can start with you, Sean, and what are the top benefits that you want other teachers to know about moving learning outdoors? So yeah, I mean, number one is hands-on inquiry-based, phenomena-based learning. You know, the kids are experiencing in real time, whether you're outside and it starts misting, and then they see the rainbow and they're like, why, why do we see those colors? And then I have the kids investigate that. I'll have QR codes with me and I have materials ready for, for them to answer these questions so we can get the investigation underway right away. Or if they see an insect and I don't know what it is, we're scanning it with an app to find out what it is. Um, so just that inquiry, but also the student surprises. Uh, I'm always surprised at what the students look. I, 
I'm always blown away by what they know. One of the f amazing stories, one time I was out there in the fifth graders, we have a stage in the garden. It's just a pa paver patio. And uh, I, I was dancing to the kids. In the beginning, I was singing a song about plants and how they grow and, you know, they're laughing at me. Ha ha, Mr. Splowski. And I told the kids, I'm like, I want you guys to make sure you come up with your own song and dance. And sure enough, within five minutes, I look over and I see a group of girls and th there they are. And they've, they've written a song. They've come up with body movements and they're, it's literally a whole theatrical performance. It was only like 35 seconds long, but I recorded it because I saw the moment. And then I took that moment and I taught every single kid in school what they did. And they had other kids creating their own version of what these fifth grade students did. So we're creating leaders out there. But most importantly, the kids are having fun. Why do I wake up to go to school? I want to make learning engaging. I want to make it fun. I want to make it relevant for their lives. Um, and that's what outdoor learning can do. It's just, you got to get out there, you got to play and you got to experiment and don't be afraid to try new things because teaching is about sometimes not being perfect and learning along the way. And I'm going to keep learning and I'm going to keep teaching outdoors and I love it. So thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sean, for sharing that. Um, and, and Ray, would you also just add to it uh, from a principal perspective, uh, what would you share with other principals as the top benefits of outdoor learning? One of the top benefits is if, if we're well implemented, you will reach your goals. If whatever whatever is your goal for science, for reading, for math, if you keep that engagement with not only teachers collaborating, but students using this space, those real life experiences are creating a I create new scenarios for for students to make to link right to link concept and to keep keep growing. The collaboration piece that's number two, and that also is invested in the culture. The culture of every school speak louder than anything else. So when you have a group of adults working towards the same goal, it was is going to transfer to students and and the environment. Not only will be fun to be outside, but also to fun to be inside the school. You know, and and last, it also improves social emotional uh, skills in our students. We live through unprecedented times. Um, here in, in Dallas, we have uh, very bad weather for the past week. So all that is limit the students' experiences. It uh, we are mitigating loss, like we mentioned in the beginning. We also uh, try to be empathetic about the loss that happened through a last year of learning. So. Having this space allows students to uh, collaborate, to talk to each other, to be self-aware of their surroundings, to be aware of nature, and, and, and gives an, a different feeling to be in the class. So those are my top three. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Ray and Sean, for, share, for sharing your perspectives and your stories in particular. Uh, they're just so motivating and hopefully they'll inspire others as well. Um, at OutTeach, we partner with schools also just across many geographies and we've seen so many of these similar benefits. Um, you know, if I just point to academic growth because the learning is real and relevant to kids' lives, uh, especially in science. And then both of you have spoken to uh, social emotional learning and growth, which is also important, and then just improved teacher effectiveness. So um, you've offered great takeaways, and I just want to summarize really quickly because now is a time that so many, there's so much interest in outdoor learning. Um, two of the things that you've both highlighted that just shown up throughout this conversation is how important it is to establish a shared vision before launching, and that this needs to be a vision that principals and teachers alike are behind and that it's integrated into the goals of your school and your school dis district, and that's a key to success. The second is that teachers are key. So invest in them, support them with professional learning, and uh, that is focused on outdoor learning, and help them um, not only move instruction outdoors, but become much uh, stronger teachers as well, because they are more experiential and student-centered. So as a reminder, in the resource link, we have um, several resources. We also have our Twitter handles, and we're here for any questions that you may have. So thank you all for joining us. Many thanks again to Ray and Sean, and good luck. Hopefully, we'll see you all outside. <laughs> thank you.